So here's Freddy, Freddy from the Libre Space Foundation. Uh, so his passion is uh, uh, scheduling uh, uh, satellite uh, hunting passes, right? <laughs> so he does that until 3 a.m. because at 3 a.m. he has to, to walk the dog out. So he also has uh, that on his smartphone. So, so I'm glad that we have a workshop from Freddy. So he's going to teach us a lot. So the ground is yours, Freddy. Do you want this microphone? No. Oh. Okay. Hello, good morning, everyone. So I'm Freddy from Liberspace. I'm uh, one of the main developers of Sadnox. And uh, in this workshop, we are going to talk about uh, how a uh, NORAT ID assignment is, uh, is performed. So, what is NORAT ID? NORAT ID is a five digit number. Uh, usually, it's uh, coming from, uh, with uh, the TLE, two line element set. Uh, the catalog of NORAD IDs are generated by USS Stratcom, which is part of uh, US Defense Department. And the catalog is maintained by the uh, 18th Space Control Squadron, which is part of US Air Force. What is a TLE set? TLE set is a format for en uh, encoding uh, orbital uh, parameters, orbital elements, and some other info for the satellites. And uh, it, as its name says, uh, it's consisted by uh, two lines of 70 characters. This, is comes, this comes from uh, the punch cards, which were 80 characters uh, long. Uh, actually, there is usually a third line when someone uh, shares the TLE, which is the title line or line zero, uh, which has a common name for, of the satellite. If the satellite is identified, then usually it's the name of the satellite or uh, a short name of it. Uh, if not, then uh, usually uh, we use something like object A or something similar. Uh, the TLE set, uh, in combination with uh, simplified perturbation models, with the most known one to be SGB4, uh, help us to calculate the position of a satellite on a specific time. Uh, we use uh, the TLE are updated uh, frequently because they are valid or not valid exactly, more accurate near the, the time that they, are, they were published. Uh, a fun fact about TLE that uh, they were affected by the uh, 2000 year uh, problem. I don't know if you know about it. It's the bug when the time went from 1999 to 2000, the year. So you can find more info if you want about it in this link. So how the TLE set looks like? It's like this. We said about the zero line and the two other lines. Uh, in this presentation and workshop, we are going to use mostly these uh, fields of the two-line elements. Uh, the other ones are mostly uh, the orbital parameters. And uh, of course, they used sometimes for uh, identify which satellite is which. Uh, but in this case, we are not going to talk about them. So we have the common name we said before, the NORAD ID, which is present in uh, both lines, the international designator, which is another ID uh, coming from COSPAR, and uh, it's the two last 
the two first uh, digits are the year that the, uh, the satellite uh, was launched, and the three next are the uh, it's the order of this year, the uh, number of the launch of this year, and the last uh, letter, which can go uh, from A to Z, from AA to ZZ, and AAA to ZZZ. It's the uh, it's the actual payload that uh, was uh, deployed from these loans. Uh, finally, the TLE epoch, which is uh, when the TLE uh, the TLE epoch when they they were published. So the oh, just give me a second. Yeah, they represent uh, the the day and the part of the day. So, uh, what we have to do in order to assign a NORAD ID to a satellite? First, we need a successful launch and deployment. Uh, if there isn't one, then NORAD IDs are not uh, assigned to this. So if the launch failed or deployment fails, then we don't assign something. Next, we, uh, we usually, after the launch and deployment, we are waiting uh, from a couple of hours to a couple of days from uh, the first TLE to come with the actual NORAD IDs. And uh, on these published uh, TLEs, there, there are no common names, as we don't know which, which satellite is which. So after the uh, publishing of the TLEs and the NORAD IDs, uh, we have the satellite owner and operators to find uh, which NORAD ID fits their, their satellite. This can be done by comparing the uh, satellite, satellite uh, transmissions, the Doppler shifted transmissions, uh, with the ones that are expected from the TLE that uh, the, the, uh, they expected from the published TLEs. Uh, also, we can use satellite telemetry data like uh, GPS position and some other parameters in order to make uh, uh, the calculations more easily. Uh, next step is after the identification is the satellite owner and operator to inform the data provider, uh, the uh, uh, squadron, to in order to update the uh, TLE set with a common name. So this looks pretty straightforward, but it's not that straightforward because there are several issues uh, with this uh, process. First, NORAD IDs uh, does not follow the deployment order. Uh, so it's, it's not like that uh, two uh, items that deployed one after another have uh, uh, have NORAD IDs that is one after another. Uh, the, s the most serious issue that we face is that satellites are not always uh, fully functional. Some of them never transmit and there are many out there that haven't uh, identified uh, because they never transmitted. Uh, some of them fail after uh, some transmissions, some hours or days of transmissions. And so if you don't uh, try to identify them uh, early, then, you, then they remain still unidentified. And some of the satellites work in special conditions over a specific area or when uh, are on light, so you need to catch them on this phase in order to uh, to get the signal and 
be able to uh, identify uh, which, uh, which DLE they follow and which NORAD ID. Also, there are uh, cases that the satellite owners and operators misidentify satellites. Uh, there are a couple of examples the last year. And finally, uh, some of the missions, some of the owners and operators, they don't have uh, the ability to track and identify their satellite because they didn't give uh, attention to the ground station segment uh, before the deployment. So, or in some cases, uh, I have seen that they have a malfunctioning uh, ground station. So these uh, make the, the process of identification uh, a little complicated. So uh, there are people that uh, after a launch and a deployment uh, help uh, teams and uh, operators to identify uh, their satellites. Uh, a disclaimer, there isn't any source of truth uh, for uh, identification. There are people, uh, by, by, uh, by saying that there isn't any source of truth, I don't mean at all that uh, there isn't someone that is uh, trustworthy. I mean that all of us do some mistakes or some wrong calculations, so we need uh, to validate uh, any source that says, yeah, this, uh, this NORAD ID fits this satellite. So we come to the second point. Uh, the presented method here will not be uh, of high accuracy. Uh, the, uh, it doesn't use calculations with high, with high accuracy, but it's a good method for validate other sources on uh, TLE identification and NORAD ID identification. So what we are going to do, uh, we are going to compare the waterfalls, some waterfalls with uh, uh, Doppler shifted signals uh, to uh, some specific TLE that we uh, have and try to see if uh, the expected signal uh, from specific TLEs are uh, the same with the signal we received. And we are going to see uh, the story of two satellites, the TBEX A and TBEX B, which both launched uh, with the Falcon Heavy B5 uh, the last uh, June. And we are going to use uh, these tools. We are going to use SADNOC, SADNOC, uh, SADNOC's network uh, in order to get the images. Uh, if we had a launch uh, deployment right now, we, we were going also to schedule uh, observations in order to get the waterfall images stuff, but now we are going to see some already uh, done observations. Uh, we are going to use a Python script called ICNOS, you can find it on this repository. Uh, the initial code was uh, written by Siswasa and I changed it a little to draw uh, the expected signal from the TLE uh, over the uh, Sadnox uh, waterfalls. We are going also to use gpredict because in some cases uh, we are not sure if the signal we see is from the satellite or there is another satellite passing, by, uh, passing over the station with that uh, transmits in the same frequency or we are not sure if we are following the right object. Finally, the other two tools, we are not going to use them but are useful uh, for finding information about the satellites. Uh, the satellite sites usually have information about the transmitter, the uh, mode that 
satellite transmits, uh, some pre preliminary uh, TLEs that help us uh, before the official TLEs to uh, try to start uh, uh, observe the, the objects, the satellites, and by social media I mean that many missions and many uh, satellite operators, amateur or uh, teams, uh, are usually uh, communicate with each other through social media. The most used is the Twitter. Uh, so usually you will see a thread or uh, tweets about, uh, about identifications and uh, calculations and, or, or about modes that a satellite uses, etc. And finally, the, uh, for the amateur satellites, we have the Yaru uh, site where you can see uh, the, some, of the, uh, some of the coordination uh, frequencies on the of the amateur satellites. So let's move forward to the demo. I'm going to follow uh, how we started with this. Uh, oh, it's not very. Can, can you read it, or kind of? Okay, I'm going to follow how we uh, keep a thread in the community uh, site, community.libre.space, about this launch, and uh, we are going to move uh, and see more about the uh, TBEX satellites. So first, we uh, we were we found that. There is a deployment, a launch with a deployment, and we found out that all these satellites are going to uh, transmit in the amateur frequencies, and we are able to uh, get them. Uh, among them is the TBEXs, TBEX A and TBEX B. So before, uh, so we are we have uh, added those into the. Sorry. Yeah, all these all these are cubesets uh, in the same uh, in the same launch. Yeah. Uh, so we have added them and their transmitters uh, into uh, Sadnox DB in order to be able to schedule observations about them. What we miss here is the preliminary TLEs in order to start uh, watch them. We were uh, we were lucky because uh, James Cutler uh, helped us by providing us uh, uh, the TBEX preliminary TLEs. So we used also these TLEs for the other satellites. As when they are uh, deployed, uh, usually they. They are going into a group, so using the same TLEs for all the group, uh, it's uh, quite well. Uh, these preliminary TLEs were. Uh, sorry? Question? Yep. Yes, yes, are generated uh, from uh, from the orbit that the rocket has and the deployment time. So, so this is an estimation, and also uh, it depends a lot from the uh, time that uh, the launch will will happen. So, these TLEs were for 3:30 UTC, but. Ah, one more detail here that uh, James told us that TBEX-A will transmit at uh, this frequency for the uh, 437-485 megahertz, and TBEX-B on this a little different frequency. 
just keep it in mind and we'll come back to this. So the launch game, we, oh, here we have the temporary, when, when we add uh, satellites in our database, we use some temporary NORAD IDs until we uh, manage to identify the right ones and move the satellites to the right one. So this is the temporary assignment. And uh, 20 transmitters for all these nine satellites. And then we have the loans. Uh, as you can see in this post, the loans shipped for three hours. So there is a need for a new uh, temporary pre preliminary TLEs. Uh, thanks to SISWASA, we got them. And we are moving forward. So, uh, the first observation we are going to see is this one. Mm, let me check if it is the right one, sorry. Okay, so it's not the right one. Uh, okay, here we are. So uh, we are lucky and these loans had uh, the first TLEs from uh, Space Truck. Uh, a couple of hours after the, the deployment. So we started observing with these TLEs, uh, the satellites, and we're going to see the first observation, which is... Easy to write with a microphone in the head. Submax.org slash observations slash this one. Okay, so this is the first one that we got for one of the first ones that we got for TBXA. Uh, as you can see, there is, uh, le let me explain what we see here. Here is the uh, waterfall. Uh, the uh, observation starts from here. This is the time in seconds. So zero seconds, 100 seconds. And here we expect to see a straight line. If we have uh, the right orbit elements, we expect to see a straight line as we perform uh, TLE correction, uh, Doppler shift uh, correction uh, in our client. So when we don't see a straight line means that either it is a terrestrial object or it is another satellite or in this case that we don't have uh, the right TLEs. The, the TLEs we have does not describe exactly the, uh, the orbit of the satellite. This is, uh, this is normal for a new deployment, so we don't expect a straight line uh, on the first observations. So how now we can, uh, we, we have some TLEs from uh, Space Truck, uh, how we can see which one fits this, uh, this signal better. And this is where Ignos is, uh, get in the game. Okay, it's not visible at all. Uh, let me fix this. Okay. 
So, uh, first I'm going to, uh, I have previously uh, cloned the Ignos repository. So it's not something uh, special, it's uh, just the script, some license or readme files, the requirements that uh, needs uh, Python to run uh, the script, and the rest are some files that I have here to help us move forward faster. Uh, they just are the TLE that we are going to compare uh, with its uh, observation. This TLE can be found easily in, uh, in Celestrack or Spacetrack sites. Uh, usually I use Spacetrack as it gets a little uh, time to Celestrack be updated with the latest TLE. So you go to TLE search, you uh, say uh, an ORAD ID, and you can uh, limit it uh, in time, and or get the last five ones, uh, if you want three lines or not, and you get the uh, elements. So we copy these elements to uh, the files. So we're going to see, I uh, don't remember the number. Okay, we're going to see the observation with uh, number 77, 2710. So we need to copy there the DLEs from Spacetrack that we wanted. Let's see the, uh, what this file contains, it's 77.27.10. So it's like that, it's a couple of elements, it's one for a different uh, NORAD ID, and uh, we are going to use all of them and generate uh, waterfall images with the paths for these, and see which one uh, fits better. So in order to run this, we need the requirements. So I have already uh, created a virtual Python environment in order to install the requirements there. Uh, so to install the requirements, you just pip install, run pip install, minus r requirements. I have already installed it, so it's fast. And now we are ready to run the uh, the script. So Python ignores the first argument is the uh, number of the subnet observation. You, you have a question? Ah, okay, sorry. Uh, so the first is the the first parameter is the script. The second parameter is the uh, number of the observation. Okay. And uh, the second parameter is the file with the TLE that we want to, to check. So, TLE. And Something went wrong. Let me. Okay, just give me one moment. Okay. 
a dependency that we have in mind. So probably we'll run this time. Okay. Uh, So now uh, what Ignos does, it downloads the waterfall image. It downloads also the audio from this observation uh, in order to find the right duration as it, uh, it's different from the one uh, that uh, is scheduled for. Usually it's a couple of seconds difference. Uh, it depends on, on the station that runs the observation. It starts a little later or ends a little later, so the, the duration is a little different from the one we expect. And then when downloads those two, uh, gets its TLE and try to produce uh, the, the new image that will compare the signal and the existing uh, the expected TLE. The numbers you, you see here is a fraction of day. Uh, the, is the difference in a fraction of day, uh, the difference from the time that observation started and the TLE epoch that we, we seen earlier. So this, is, this means, the first one means that uh, the TLE were uh, published uh, 0 0.17, etc., of a day earlier than uh, the, the observation start. And the minus one are for uh, if the TLE were published after the start. So we, we try to get the TLEs that were published uh, nearest to, to the observation uh, we have done. So let's see the, the results of running this. Uh, it was set here. So the results are the several images. No, it's the red line is visible. Can you see it? It's uh, maybe I should zoom a little. I think now it's more visible. So we can see uh, that this, uh, the red line is the expected, uh, the expected path that we, uh, that this DLE should uh, give in the signal if we use them. Uh, we see that the red line is uh, of this signal we have. So the TLEs with the NORAD ID that I put in the name, it's 44339. Uh, it's not the TLE that we expect, uh, the, that we expected, so it's not the NORAD ID of this satellite. So if we move forward to other uh, TLEs and NORAD IDs, we uh, reach uh, some others like this one. This one it's much better. It follows a little uh, the, the signal. So as we don't use, as I said before, uh, high uh, accuracy calculations, we can get these as like positive uh, results. So we keep that uh, 44354 uh, NORAD ID maybe is one of the uh, one of the uh, NORAD IDs the uh, the candidates uh, that we probably is in our, the, the satellite this is like a straight line this can also be uh, the, nor the right NORAD ID, the right TLEs for this satellite. Again, we don't have a high accuracy calculations, and also we are in the start of the uh, of the uh, 
observations. This, this observation was one day after the launch. So we are going to keep these and a couple more. So we reached the uh, result, as we will see in the forum thread, that TBXA probably is one of uh, these uh, NORAD IDs. And we choose one to watch for the later observations. We didn't have any from TBXB data, so we choose a random one and goes on for the rest of, of the satellites of this launch. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's a very good point. I omit it. Uh, I think that that day, uh, every uh, all the TLEs were were available for these loans. Uh, there are sometimes sometimes uh, uh, space track has only TLEs for a couple of the uh, for some of the satellites, and not all the objects, because they are too close. Uh, they are still too close, so until they separate it enough, uh, they give on this group one NORAT ID. So we need to make sure that uh, uh, that each uh, deployed uh, satellite object, uh, the number of the deployed objects is the same number with the NORAD IDs that we, uh, we have seen published in order to be sure that the, uh, the identified object is the right one. Uh, so we are going to move a little forward. And yeah, there were there was a problem with TBEX satellites. They didn't si signal uh, consistently. So we needed to observe it again and again. Uh, the problem is that we had to observe all these nine satellites, so we needed to split the observation, the observations to uh, through the, uh, to share all the observations through the network. So uh, the next came from James again that told us that TBEX satellites uh, are probably both uh, transmit on the same frequency instead of the two different frequencies that has told us before. So with uh, uh, that in mind, we moved forward to, uh, to schedule observations. There was also another issue that uh, the, uh, the TBEX satellites were transmitting on a frequency that was very close to, uh, to other satellites from the same uh, university, GRIFEX and MCUBED2. And also there were a couple more satellites that were transmitting on, uh, on frequencies near, near it. So uh, there were many false positives. Uh, we can uh, check one again with... Uh, Oops, wrong. So is this one? Um, okay. So in this observation, we can see a signal. It looks like coming from uh, this satellite. It has a Doppler uh, effect. We can see this uh, shifted signal. We are still in, uh, in the uh, beginning of the launch, in, uh, in the start. So we expect to see uh, such uh, such curves instead of the straight line we 
we have when the TLEs are uh, all right. So we got this uh, observation and run it again uh, in to, against in Ignos. Was the number? It was eighty-sixty-seven. Again, the same process of downloading the data and start generating. Uh, the PNG images. And we are going to see, oops, here we are, uh, that none of the produced uh, images fits uh, this signal. So this means that uh, this signal is from another satellite. Uh, here I stopped in this, uh, in this waterfall. You can see here that the red line is almost, uh, it follows this signal, which is uh, from another satellite of the same launch, but it's not the one we, uh, we uh, observe in this observation. So we need to uh, know which signal, uh, in order to be uh, completely sure that this signal is uh, from another uh, satellite and uh, not from these loans, uh, we need to find out which satellite is this. Uh, we have the, frequen the frequencies of the satellites in our DB, so we can uh, create, and this is where gpredict is used, we can create uh, a module in order to check which satellites are, uh, which satellites are close in the frequencies and watch, watch them if they were over the same, uh, on the same uh, location at the same time. So for TBEX is, is all these satellites that have similar uh, frequencies. Uh, you can see M cubed, we talked uh, earlier, F and B, F and A, Grifex, and other satellites. Uh, I, have, uh, I have used the right TLEs of this observation. So here you can see all the objects of the observation, all the, uh, sorry, all the objects of the launch uh, that with the TLE that had on, on the time that uh, the observation uh, was performed. And also I have added Elfin B, which is, as you probably uh, found out, the one that we see there. So we use the time controller and go back to the, uh, to the date of the observation, which was uh, 9 of July at 1.24 a.m. So, July 9, 1 and 24. Let's see when we start to see the signal. It starts around here, which is uh, like six minutes after the, the start. So go somewhere here. And now we can see here in the, uh, the cyan color is the station that observed, uh, that performed that observation. We can see that Elfin which is this white uh, cycle, 
it's it started to be over the, the station. So the station received Elfin B instead of uh, the other objects that were above above it. So this is not uh, tip XA, it's another satellite, so we've added the observation as bad. Uh, we were lucky, we also have the data here that are from Elfin B, so we could find out that was Elfin B easier, but in some cases we don't have decoded data at all, so we need to check that indeed the signal that we see it's not the one we want to we the one we expect to see. So let's move forward and after several observations and trying to find out uh, what's going on, we had this one observation. That was from TBEX A. Let me see if I have it here. Okay. So th for this observation was used uh, the Norat ID that was assigned to another satellite. Uh, it was uh, identified by uh, another team as uh, Oculus S ACR, ASR. And, but after some observations, we found out that probably this is the one that uh, is the right for TBEX A and not for the Oculus that was identified. So we had there a misidentification as I said earlier that this could be a possibility. So let's run this uh, in Ignos. You see here that the, the time of the TLEs are uh, nearer uh, in our observation start, so they have a good accuracy. So I'm going to uh, Okay, so this is the one that fits, as you can see, that fits better uh, the, the satellite. This is the one that was rock, uh, uh, assigned to another satellite. So having uh, this evidence, we can uh, say to publicly, to the community, and also to Space Track to uh, change the identification as we have different results. But it's good always to, uh, to validate this and confirm this with other uh, people that uh, calculate uh, and identify uh, satellites and NORAD IDs. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. It's Okay. Okay. Yep.
Hey, um, I have a question. Wouldn't it be better for identification to have broader uh, waterfall images? What? So that you could, mm -hmm. if you know that you want to hunt satellites on the Satnox network, that you would use a broader bandwidth on the waterfall image. Yeah, that's, uh, that's what other tools do, does, like STRF. Uh, the, right now the goal of Satnox is not to identify satellites, so it was not uh, built that way. Uh, but we are in the process of uh, changing things on how we store waterfalls and maybe have a separate mode that goes for this for this goal and have different parameters what we what we'll observe. Wait for the mic. So I am the developer of uh, the GNU radio module of uh, Sarnox and uh, the idea is uh, for our next uh, release uh, to have the, such kind of information from the physical layer or the, the modulation uh, part. So, uh, so research like Freddy's or uh, C is to be more easy to, to be performed and uh, if you have Especially if you have uh, PSK modulations, you, you have a very accurate uh, estimation of the frequency offsets and then stuff like uh, IGNOS or uh, STRF can be much more robust. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, any other question? So, in general, to wrap up, uh, the concept is that uh, it's easy for anyone to uh, hunt satellites and try to identify uh, which NORAD ID, uh, it's, which satellite has its NORAD ID. And you can use uh, Sadnox observations and IGNOS to help this process if you are interested in. Uh, but as I said, it needs some uh, to be careful on what we see to check other, to cross check with other sources or to cross check inside the network with other observations because sometimes there are local, there's local noise that we can confuse uh, for the satellite or, and there are other cases also that needs to be, uh, but we need to be careful about them. Okay. All right, Freddy. So uh, one more thing about these, uh, these loans. Uh, as this launch was in a low inclination, the orbit was in low inclination, Ma uh, there were many people that couldn't perform uh, calculations in order to identify the objects with more accurate ways than uh, this method. So we, we were uh, one of the few that managed to identify most of the objects uh, after like one month of the deployment as we want to be fully sure that the objects have been separated enough in order this method to be more accurate. And uh, that's all. I don't know if you have any more questions. I think uh, I invite them to join you afterwards. Just one quick one. Go ahead, Alex. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's a more a general question because uh, uh, I haven't been have been hard time keeping up with all the communication that happens when you do these things. I was wondering. How good is the communication with, uh, for example, Kelso these days? It seems to me that it has become more interactive, whereas previously uh, what you guys did on the amateur uh, side wasn't just for that, but now it seems like uh, they are actually using the observations you make. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, we are uh, in communication with uh, uh, Kelso and the other uh, amateurs that uh, they do the same. Uh, 
that do the same uh, calculations and trying to identify. And we, we mostly try to validate the results and confirm them. This is... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Interesting. So, yeah, if you want to help uh, uh, to automatize all this process or, or to make it uh, even more accurate, then join uh, John Freddy in the dance, right? Thank you. Thank you very much, Freddy. Thank you.